What's going on, Facebook? Hopefully you're having an amazing Friday afternoon. I think it's Friday. Um, I've been hanging out at this awesome event, how to buy, sell, and exit businesses, October 14th through 18th. It's only 600 pages deep. No big deal with Mr. Keith Cut. And we have been having a blast learning all about the ins and outs of speaking business language, learning the financial aspects and how to read them, um, learning how to identify a great deal, learning what to do, how to finance it, all kinds of jazz. And we have still three days left, so we're totally pumped about that. But today, Keith was talking about something that's really interesting. He was talking about the difference of how he manages his culture within the you know half dozen companies he owns. And, and and he was talking about the fact that, you know, setting goals is always fun and exciting. But instead of just setting goals, he said he doesn't set goals. You know, he, he views goals as just wishes or hopes of the future. He said when he runs, Cameron, what's up, dude? Uh, for everyone tuning in, I see the number ticking up there. Love to know what you're grateful for. Love to know what you're excited about. Jason, nice to see you. Um, we're talking about the difference between goals and standards. And and so what's really interesting is he said, you know, goals is simply wishful thinking. It's getting excited about something and hoping it happens. Uh, he says, I have no room for that in the companies I run. He said, I have standards. And, and we set standards by which people live up to. And if they don't, they're gone. And if they do, they stay. And, and it was like, wow. And I thought about that in, in coaching, in your life, in the way that you hold yourself accountable I'd love to know how many of you out there have goals, things you want to work towards, things you're excited about, things you hope that happen, wishful thinking. And how many of you truly, when you sit down and decide what's going to happen in your in the near future, you just have standards. You say, listen, this is not a goal. This is what is going to happen. And, and it's the standard at which I'm going to apply myself to get the results I want. And I'd love to know how you feel or what you feel the difference is between the two. I remember sitting there, for me, it kind of clicked. I was like, wow, you know, what if every goal I had said I was going to work toward the next six months, instead of setting a goal and, and, and working towards it and doing all the things we do, I said, what if I just made, you know, instead of saying, ideally, I want to be at this weight in my health, all of a sudden to be like, no, that's my standard. I will settle for nothing less than that by this date. And, and and just the simple conversation, just the change in in the words, created an entirely different visceral experience in my body. Jason says huge goals with a big action plan. I'm with you. I've always set goals. I I love you know RPM and, and organizing, having an ideal day vision, having a gap map, um, painting out the wheel of life and figuring out where I'm at and where I want to go. All different types of ways to do it. But when it became a standard, it's just a different way to communicate with yourself and your brain that I think activates a different side of who you are. And, and try it right now. Uh, exactly. Standard, lack of settlement. You're not willing to settle for anything less. But think of one goal you have in your life. One goal. No matter what it is. Actually, if you have a goal that you're excited about, write it in the comment section. I want to hear what some of your goals are. I'll, I'll, I'll stick on it and see if I can read some here. But, but toss me a goal. Tim? Um, I'm adjusting mine, like you said. I set them low, raising both now. Awesome. But what's a goal you have? What's some goal you want to achieve, let's say, in the next three to six months? Something you'd love to see happen. Uh, business goal, financial goal, health goal, emotional goal, relationship goal. What's one goal you'd really like to you know, achieve or experience? Now, if you were to write that goal down, so in the next three months, I want to achieve this specific result in my whatever. So Michael says he wants to be able to support his parents. Wonderful goal. Um, double my vacation time next year. Four weeks on the road with family. Wonderful. Buy your first home. Chase, what up? Great goal. Love that. What other goals do you have? Cameron, raising money for a green worldwide and closing on it. Awesome. Who else is out there? Jason, goal to move the top 3% tier of my company. Wendy, nice to see you. Getting myself motivated and exercise. Wonderful. Cool goals. Great goals. I, I think I can like them here. Like, like, like. <laughs> That's a cool feature. Um, so I, I like all these goals I'm seeing that are popping through here. So take a moment right now and, and first write down that goal on a piece of paper if you have it. Right below that, rewrite it as a standard. 
and see see if it changes how you feel about it. For some of you, it might not. You might be like, eh, who cares? For some of you, though, it might be a game changer. I, I can feel the difference. So, you know, Jason says to move to the top 3% tier of my company is a goal. And And what if you rewrote it as a standard, Jason, where you said, listen, by when do you want to achieve this? Is that a three month? So I think it's a three month. So say within the next three months, I will be the top 3% of my company no matter what. That's the standard. And if you were to just rewrite it instead of in the next three months, I'm really grateful to hopefully be in the top 3% of my company. It's exciting. It's fun. It's something to work towards. Versus in the next three months, I will be, no matter what, within the top 3% of my company. And I will stay that way from this point on. It, I don't know if you can hear it, but the, the difference in certainty that exists there, the difference in, in strength and power that exists behind that is remarkable. I can feel it. I hope you can too. Uh, Jennifer, I'm with you on that, Wendy. So getting yourself motivated to exercise. Um, here's something that's interesting. With exercise... I, I do know a bit about it. I've had tons of experience there. Jason, totally welcome. Can you feel, I, I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but but the, the phonetic change is one thing, but the experience change in your body of stating what your standard is and how you will show up feels totally different. Uh, does it help to start with small goals and wins first? Absolutely, freaking lutely especially with exercise, fitness, and health. Um, huge thing there is you want to get momentum on your side. So real simple, start by setting a little tiny daily outcome or result. If, if you go to our blog, there's a video we did, or, or jrctv.com is our YouTube channel, has all the videos. Either way, there's a video we did about building positive habits. And one thing you wanna do as far as really transforming your fitness is you wanna identify what is a natural trigger that can set off the routine you wanna get yourself into. So if you wanna get yourself to go to the gym or go for a run or go for a bike ride or do something physically, whatever the routine is, what's a trigger you could do every day that happens naturally, consistently, and effortlessly every day? So what's a natural trigger that occurs every single day that can set off as a reminder to get you to go do the routine? So that's the first thing you want to look for. The trigger could be waking up. Every time I wake up, that's my trigger to go for it. The trigger could be um, at you know a certain time of the day, lunchtime, you know, noon. I always work out. Six p.m., five p.m., whatever. I you set a time to go work out. Um, ah, identify the positive trigger exactly. So identify first the positive trigger. Once you have a trigger that really works for you, you set an alarm on your phone, a certain song goes off at a certain time, um, a certain person you have a meeting with every day that you set the meeting with, a um, calendared scheduled event could be a simple trigger, but something where you set off a trigger that says every time this happens, that means immediately, right then and there, with no excuse, with no hesitation, I do X routine. And, and you want to set it up secondly so it's easy. So how do you make it easy? Set up all the equipment and necessary things ahead of time. So if you go to the gym, put a bag together, put your shoes in it, put your outfit in it, put everything together so that literally the moment that alarm goes off, you grab the bag and go. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to gather things up. You don't have to remember things. You don't have to try to figure out where the things are. You literally have a pre-packed bag. You get it and go. Now, part of the routine is you go, you work out, you do your thing, you repack it, you come home, you rinse off, and the end of the pattern is when you're done, you repack the bag for tomorrow so that you never, ever, ever have to repack or redesign the situation at the moment where the trigger goes off. You always want to have it preset. Now, once you have that set up, set the alarm. And, and the first few times, it's muscle building, so it's not... You know, just because it's so easy, but really, truly, um, you know, start the routine there. So the trigger goes off, grab the bag and go. Now, when you get back, you want to give yourself some type of positive reward. Now, a positive reward is something that could be emotionally positive, physically positive. Um, it can be something you, you know, buying tickets to a cool concert you wanted to go to. It could be going out to lunch or, or dinner, a healthy lunch or dinner, hopefully after working out with a friend. It could be spending quality time with someone you love. It's something that emotionally 
fills you up and gets you pumped and excited about connecting to that experience. Another way to do it, if you like being around other people, is connect with two or three buddies where you commit to always doing it together. And the reward is you all go do something fun afterwards and enjoy it. But that's another you know part of the system. So um, trigger, routine, reward, and building those three things together to get it into a rhythm. In the beginning, it's like lifting a muscle. You got you're lifting a weight. You got to build it. Over time, it'll just go. William, what's up, dude? Picking goals that really move you are critical. I struggle with it. It's not just money. Yeah, who cares about money? Pick stuff you love. Um, and, and with with goals. The, the, my favorite exercise is something we give away on our main website, but it's designing your ideal day. So instead of working towards, um, instead of working towards some end result, some tangible thing you're trying to get, my thought is set it up so that whatever you're doing, whatever activities you're working are on, help you literally live the type of day to day life that totally and radically fulfills you as a human being. So the big question there is what fulfills you? What makes you feel happy? What makes you feel alive? What makes you feel excited? What makes you feel, you know, that rush of energy in your body where you just, you're like, man, if I could do this every day, that is living to the fullest extent. And whatever brings you to life at the highest level like that, start with that in your vision. Now, some people, when you ask them, it's too broad, so they don't know what to say. So start with a feeling. How would you want to feel every day of your life? Set of emotions. It doesn't have to be one. It could be 20, 40, 10, 5, whatever. But set with emotions. And say emotions, if that's how I'm going to feel, how healthy would I be? How alive would I be every single day? Map that out. From there, who would I share time with? You know, it's not about money or stuff, but who would I be around all day? What kind of people would I want to invest in my life with so that we're connected every single day? From there, you know, where would I want to be on my perfect life, perfect day, day-to-day -day living? Where would I want to be? Um, from there, you know, what would I want to do? And, and map out stuff you want to do from reading to learning to growing to traveling to laughing. And, and the truth is, God, honestly, nowadays, you can get paid to do just about anything nowadays. Anything. And, 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 you know, people always scratch their head and they're like, yeah, but I don't know. Can you? I mean, I struggle to make money. How do I pay the bills? I read an article I just I posted on Facebook a while ago of a guy in New York who literally has a six-figure lucrative business. And all he does is wait in line for other people. That's his whole business. His whole business is getting paid by the hour to go sit in line for other people. And um, that's it. And get paid by the hour to just sit there and, and wait until he gets to the front line. He calls them. They come and pick up whatever they bought. And uh, transaction's over. And he got paid by the hour to just sit there and wait. <laughs> Crazy. But if people get paid to literally sit on the ground and do nothing but wait in a line, it's pretty remarkable. You just got to get creative on, on marketing and advertising there and figuring out what the need is that people want to overcome. The pain that they're trying to solve. Uh, one thing that Keith said, if you're coming up with a creative way... The difference between you know being an aspirin or a vitamin. An aspirin solves a pain. A vitamin just makes people feel a little bit healthier. Obviously, he said if you're if you're gonna come up with some creative solution as a business, make sure one thing he said isn't it's an aspirin. It solves a problem and takes away the pain. Let's see, Wendy. Hopefully that's helpful. William, yes, being healthy is the reward. Love that. Tim, I find money to be boring, but freedom it brings to be amazing. Awesome. Then reset your goals. Instead of you know setting that standard as here's how much money I'm trying to achieve, reset it. Say, hey, here's how much freedom I want to achieve. And here's the number that allows me to have that. And so just reword it. You know, I will have two weeks of absolute freedom with my family by this time. That's my standard I will live by, and I'll never accept anything less. In order to make that happen. I have to achieve X amount of revenue or X amount of new clients, and then bingo, I've got my freedom that I desire and deserve. Neil, what's up, dude? Uh, hi, Jarek. How do you determine if it's a standard is right for you or not? Thanks for doing this. Sent you an email. I'll check out the email. Um, so how do you determine if a standard is right for you? Test it. See, see, see what it's about. Um, give yourself a, a, a true time period. It's like saying, you know, how do you know if weightlifting is right for you? Well, go lift some weights and see how you feel 30 days from now. Um, but the one key factor is 
Uh, and someone actually asked this in our performance coach university training tonight. We were talking about goal setting and vision planning. And someone said, um, you know, what if you have someone who like sets a standard or sets a goal and then so many days or weeks in, they like reset it and change it again. And then so many weeks in, they like reset it and change it again. So the one thing you want to figure out is what are you going to commit to following through 100% on? So if you say, listen, I'm going to see, I'm going to test to see if this is really truly my standard to live by. And I'm going to set it. And I'm going to live that way for a set period of time. And then I'm going to check in and measure and see how I feel. Do I, If I feel absolutely amazing, I'm going to keep going. If I get to that set period of time, 30 days from now, and living by that standard, I feel like crap. I'm going to go ahead and cut that out or adjust it accordingly until it does make it feel wonderful or it does get the result you want. It doesn't have to feel good all the time, but it gets the desired result you're after. And once it gets the desired result you're after, now lock it in and keep that baby rolling, if that makes sense. Great question, though. What other questions do you guys have? And gals, not just guys. I see the numbers moving. Accountability is massive. Accountability changes everything. It's why we do coaching one-on-one. -on -one. I see a lot of people you know, jumping in our space and getting into group coaching because it's more lucrative financially, but one-on-one -on -one accountability, there's nothing else like it on the earth because they know you, they know who you are, they know what you're doing, and they are on top of you. Uh, Neil said, smart, doing a test period. Absolutely. So very welcome. And I'll, I'll make sure to check that email. Um, congrats on your update of your 30-day challenge too. I saw it come through. Really smart. I like the new update that you sent me. Um, let's see. Coming through, coming through. Identify positive trigger. Yes. Um, Jennifer, let's see, I'm just combing through all these comments. What are the components or standards, results, reasons, beliefs? Um, there's lots of ways to do that. Is it Daverin? Daverin, I like that name. Hi, mom. Hope you're feeling better. Uh, everyone. That's my mom who just put a smiley face. If you could, please say a prayer for her. She has some little challenges going on with her eyesight that they're going to be working on this next week. So I'd love a prayer for her. Um, if you're willing to share one, I'm certainly saying some prayers and, and keeping track to make sure she heals fast and quick. Hopefully everything gets better quickly. Um, I think it's Devron. What components of the, what are the components of standards? So, so real simple, a standard is, is just setting a baseline standard that you will not accept anything except that in what it is you're doing. So if you were to set a standard in your health, you would just say, listen, um, this is the standard. I'm going to draw a line and this is the standard I will not allow myself to ever drop below. So it, it's really identifying where are you, ideally really where do you want to be, and at that point, drawing that line in the sand and saying, listen, I will never allow myself to slip below this standard versus a goal is something you're trying to get to. And even if you get halfway there, it's like, hey, I made progress. That's exciting. Where a standard is drawing that line and saying nothing exists in my life below this period ever, ever, ever. The moment it gets there, I will freak out and, you know, turn into a tornado until I get myself back up above that standard. So the component is instead of it's something you're working towards. It's a limit you're placing that says, I will not exist anywhere below this limit ever in my life, business, health, whatever the standard's in. Darren, I am a random guy who is chatting with you on Facebook. Who are you? <laughs> Diane, love you, Liz, sending you. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, okay, how about positive persuading your spouse to exercise with you? Um, now that gets tricky. Uh, it, it has to be something I would say that has to do more with who you picked instead of who you're with. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. But but getting convincing your spouse, it has to be for their reasons. You know, why do they want to go work out? Why do they want to be active? And when does it work best for them? If you have a spouse, um, you know, if you have a spouse that goes out and works from six in the morning till seven at night and they're exhausted physically pushing themselves all the time and then you know you, they get home at six and they're exhausted and you're like let's work out that, that's not really fair they're, they're probably burnt out by that time versus 
if you guys have a schedule and you're, you're blessed enough, like my wife and I are, oh, there's some light. If you're blessed enough, like my wife and I are, where, where we design our day and we go do life how we want, we've worked it into our schedule and we've designed our week so that we get to work out every single day together. And it's our standard to always get in a morning routine. And it, it's really heart touching and wonderful time to get to spend with them. So it really designs decides, Wendy, on, on how you set up your schedule and who you, you decided to connect with in that way as far as your lifestyles, your jobs, your careers, who you are, what you do, and how you approach it. Um, Darren, how are you official? Pfft, I I don't know. I guess Facebook likes me. <laughs> um, they verified my page for me, and I got access to this really cool, amazing feature they're rolling out. I think they're going to be rolling this out to the general public in next month, year. I don't know when. Um, but they verify my page for me, so it's pretty cool. Thanks, those videos are great stuff. Thanks, Jerry. Don't stop. Absolutely love to share them. Jennifer, it works if the spouse wants to, and it's their idea. Help them get excited. Just be supportive. But wonderful advice. So Wendy, Jennifer, um, is actually a badass in working out, and her husband Timothy is ridiculously awesome as well. And you know, I'm guessing, Jennifer, do you guys both still work out together all the time? I'll wait for that response. Michael, how is the workshop you were at? Amazing. Um, if you didn't see earlier, we are at an awesome workshop with Keith Cunningham on how to buy, sell, and exit businesses. Here is our awesome manual. Just, you know, 600 pages deep. Um, Absolutely, hands down, a – no, you don't. Oops, sorry about that. Sorry if I crossed the lines or said anything I wasn't supposed to. Um, I think at one point you all did, at least – or maybe it was because we were all at an event. But the – yeah, the huge binder. <laughs> uh, what's amazing, though, is, is Keith's combing through that binder very quickly. And, and so we're learning chunks and chunks and chunks all day long. It's a five-day event. Um, really, truly remarkable. So, uh, but the advice Jennifer gave Wendy, uh, just that thought, it works if the spouse wants to and it's their idea and help them get excited and just be supportive. Um, David, what do you suggest to do about friends that are dramatic, negative, and extremely emotional at times? Um, all different ways to handle it. <laughs> I think I need more specific understanding of that. There are some people who are just emotionally and that's how they express themselves. And, and so uh, there's three types of problems, you know, normal problems, abnormal problems and life threatening problems. Think of it that way. So if it's normal in them and you know that they always overreact, they're always frustrated, they're always over the top then to react as if it's abnormal is kind of weird because that's just how they are. And you know that about them. You've known it since you've met them. Um, now, if they're just like steady Eddie, totally on track, like never really wiry, and all of a sudden one day they totally flip out, that's abnormal for them. It's like, whoa, that's different. Now, if they flip out to the point where it becomes kind of threatening or, or abusive, it's like, wow, that's really crossing the line. I might not be friends with you anymore. Um, but to constantly get upset over someone when they're acting the same way they've been acting since you met them, that's kind of a silly thing to do because it's a normal challenge or normal problem at that point. So at that point, you might want to re-identify, hey, is this the best person for me to be spending consistent time with? Um, or are there other people I might want to surround myself with that aren't that over the top? Secondary piece, most people are a mirror image in some way, shape, or form to who we are or who we try to avoid being in our own life. So the other thing you might want to consider is as they're reacting that way, is that a part of yourself that you either disown and push away or is that a part of yourself that you rarely let out? Or to be honest, are you the exact same way <laughs> and you just don't like seeing it? So there's lots of features there, but it might be some, you know, just time to comb through and figure out how it co connects to who you are and what's going on there, but I need to know more about the situation. Uh, Jennifer, let's see. Tim's hit business 80 plus hours a week. He's a bit frustrated. Yeah, I saw that. 
He keeps saying he's bored and wants to find out how he wants to do what he do when he grows up. Um, I, I, if he would, I'd be happy to have a conversation with him just as a friend. Uh, if you filled out the ideal day design kit on our, on, the, on our website, I, I'd love to know, um, you know, oh, everyone's home. What up? Uh, I'd love to know what his ideal vision of how he wants to live day to day life is. And I can help him put, a, put together a plan of how to make that happen if he's interested. Uh, Davrin, it's right to build standard when something scares you. Like bad times, negative wars, negative stuff. Um, so here's what's tricky. No matter what standard is that you create, and no matter how you say, this is how it's going to be, life's going to test that. So if a war happens, if negative stuff happens, if bad times happen, if you're going through a, a challenging situation in your life or, or business or health or something, you're going to face those challenges. Those are totally natural and normal. Again, to freak out over something that's normal or you could anticipate is going to happen, it's a waste of time, effort, and energy. It's normal. It's supposed to happen <laughs> yeah, and, and, and hopefully it doesn't but if it does it's like hey saw that coming no big deal versus if it's radically abnormal and it's like a big shock or a huge jar to you know the world um you know kind of like a crazy crazy negative event that happens at that point it could be something that you have to reset your standards for Mom, I love the advice you give to find what you li love to do and limit your time with that friend. Yeah, it's true. Um, mom, good point. So mom throws in there, here, here's what I found. Every single person you meet has some area of the life where they're truly, truly an example and they're a remarkable human being in that space. So I always give the example. I had friends growing up who were party animals. Like these guys would go from 10 in the morning till four in the morning the next day, just drinking and partying and being crazy. And I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I'm not into that space. So it was always confusing of like, I really, we, we've known each other forever. We've played sports together. They're all great people, but I don't party. So ugh, like, I, I, I don't want to like not hang out with them ever as a friend, but I asked myself a better question, which is when could I hang out with this person where it would be effective and it would be beneficial to both of us? And I said, you know what? They're party animals, but they also work out with the same intensity at the gym every day. Whoa, that's a good time to hang out with them. That's awesome. I'm going to go to the gym with them every day and try to avoid all the parties. And then I said, wait a minute, but at night, who am I going to hang out with? Well, who has some great set of routines or rituals or habits that they do at night where I could hang out with those people at night because that would bring out the best part of me and the best part of them. And we'd both be healthy, happy, fulfilled, and really living life and kicking butt. And so what I started to do is identify what are the greatest strengths of every person that surrounds me in life and how do I make sure that I consistently choose to spend time with them when they're at their best in those specific moments. That way I could be at my best, they could be at their best, and we could both be doing stuff that helps us become healthy, happy, and more fulfilled in the, in the experience together. Um, thanks, Mom. Good reminder. Well, I'm going to probably sign off. I'll take you through our Airbnb and go say hello to the whole team that's here with us. I had to do a little training session. Say hello to Facebook Live. Hey, what's up? Mr. Hiram. Hello. <laughs> Here's my beautiful wife. <laughs> and here is Austin. You gotta... Can't see too much going on out here. It's pretty exciting. Don't go, you're great. Well, it was awesome hanging out with y'all. I'm going to go and grab some dinner with everyone and hang out. Hope you have a wonderful night. And if you know someone that needs to hear anything we talked about, hit that share button and make sure they check it out. See y'all later. Bye.